If you're looking to buy a stacked NBA 2K account with max badges and more, visit SportsTMB.com. He has been in the community for years and has hundreds of reviews. Click the first link in the description to get your account today. Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it on the channel already with many more like it to come in the future. So please subscribe. I am trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate it. Today, I figured I would talk about the Atlanta Hawks because I have started an Atlanta Hawks My GM series on a second channel, so they've kind of been on the mind. What I did in that My GM series was trade for Bradley Beal, sign Jeremy Grant, draft a guy late in the first round named Desmond Bain, and so far I think the series is really interesting and I like the direction it's going, so if you are a fan of My GM content and realistic My GM content, then go ahead and go subscribe to that channel and check out that series. I figured doing a video on the Atlanta Hawks would be a good way to promote that, so if you're a Hawks fan or you just like that kind of content, go check it out. But today I wanted to talk about what I believe the Hawks should do in this coming off season to make the playoffs next year and to further the development of the team and as you can tell from the thumbnail and from what I did in that series, I believe trading for someone like Bradley Beal is the next step for this franchise. I think first we should look at what this Hawks team is and what the positives and negatives are. First of all, we obviously have to talk about Trey Young. I believe the guy has the potential to be a generational talent. People keep talking about Luka and Zion as these next young generational talents, but I'm like... I also think Trey Young can be in that same vein. Clearly the third guy there, but still in that rough area. And then there's John Collins, who I don't know the exact record, but I also know that the Hawks were around 500 when he played this year, something close to that. And I think the fact that Trey really just needs one 20 point per game guy to make the Hawks a respectable team shows a lot to the talent that he is. But Collins this year made some very noticeable strides on both ends of the court on offense he started hitting more threes got up to 21 points per game he's also been grabbing more rebounds and then on defense he's been respectable the first couple years of his career he has been pretty iffy on that end pretty inconsistent there would be times where like yeah this guy could be a damn good defender and times where we're like what the hell is this guy doing on the defensive end but this year he was blocking shots pretty well defending the paint all those kind of things he has the speed to keep up on the perimeter and and then they also traded for uh, Clint Capella. Now, he has not had the chance to play thus far. Unfortunately, the season ended, as we should all know. But he seems like he would be another good piece to build a playoff team. Now, I do have my concerns with his fit alongside John Collins, because as many threes as John Collins wants to take, he will always be a down-low pick-and-roll post player. If you take that element away from John Collins and make him just a spot up shooter, I think you're incredibly misutilizing him. So there might be some fit struggles there because Clint Capella cannot exactly space the floor. However, still, I think the ceiling of the team goes up and the defensive ceiling goes up because really what's important when building around Trey Young is that you put some defensive pieces there. Now, Clint Capella is not an out of this world defender, but he's certainly a good one. I think he's good enough to where as long as the overall personnel is not complete trash, it can make for a solid enough defense in the NBA, like at minimum like 20th which is not amazing, but if you can have an insane offense, that's definitely enough to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. And there were also the rookies as well as Kevin Herter. DeAndre Hunter was not that efficient, but he also seemed solid, like he showed some creating ability. Also showed ability to be a Robert Covington type 3 and D player who can play both forward spots, some versatility. Again, with that creating ability, I think he's going to be a solid NBA player and above average starter when he hits his peak. Maybe a star, but I don't really see that with him. But 
that's definitely a good player to have. And then Cam Reddish, he had a horrible start to his rookie year. Like he started the year looking like he did not belong in the NBA at all. But to close the year, he was really efficient and he combined that smoothness and the clearly good mechanics on his jump shot to become a good player. Like I don't think enough people are aware of how good Cam Reddish was to close this season for the past month or so. And he was gradually getting better throughout the whole year. So there's definitely things to be positive about Cam Reddish. His absolute ceiling is probably a Paul George type of player, but I think more realistically, he's like Paul George in his second or third year in Indiana, where he's a really good shooter and defender, but he's only like a 17 point per game guy. But that's still obviously a very valuable player to have. And then Kevin Herter, he made minor strides on his game. Really, he's been a pure offense guy. He's a very good three point shooter. The only concerns are he isn't the most consistent player in the world. And he's not all that amazing of a creator. He's shown ability to create off the dribble. He's also sneaky athletic, which is what you say when a white guy is athletic. And uh, he obviously has the jump shot. He has the feel. Uh, the only concern is he's not a defensive guy and he is not an amazing shot creator. But at the very least, he can be like a poor man's JJ Redick, which again is a good player to have. Now... I do believe, as I've made clear, this team should trade for a star player. Now, that does not necessarily have to be Bradley Beal. It could be someone like Buddy Heald as well. But I am of the opinion that Trey Young, alongside John Collins, is already a good enough core to start trying to make moves to win now. And I think the Hawks made it clear that that's what they were doing by trading for Clint Capella. I think that was them gesturing to Trey Young like, hey, we're going to we're going to start taking this seriously. Like when you have a talent as good as Trey Young, you really need to do you really need to do something like the Dallas Mavericks did with Luka Doncic, which was like, okay, we have our guy. We know how good he is. Let's not waste time being a bad team when we have the assets and we're in the position to start becoming a very good team and build a contender later on. So I think taking some assets like Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, the pick that they're going to get this year, which is probably going to end up around the top five, maybe Kevin Herter, whatever really becomes available, that's something that you should push for. But I believe you put a guy around Trey Young, who I already believe is like a top 20 plus probably in the top 15 maybe i don't know i'd have to look at it probably not top 15 somewhere around there player in the nba and you give him another perimeter score that the defense has to focus on first of all obviously having more offensive options is always a good thing but then second of all my biggest complaint with trey young and also luka Doncic, but that's a whole nother note is that he doesn't play off ball and that's the reason that his three-point percentage has not been amazing now i think the biggest sign of someone who doesn't know what they're talking about is someone who says that trey young is inefficient because he absolutely is not he has a 60 percent true shooting percentage but I think you could even maximize that efficiency by having him play off ball and getting more catch and shoot opportunities. This year, his three point attempts, only 30% of them are assisted, which means he's shooting what he is shooting from three almost exclusively off the dribble. Now, you get a guy like Bradley Beal, who is a creator for others on top of himself, that the defense is going to have to focus on, and suddenly, Trey Young has all the room in the world to be moving off ball to try and get open from three, and then you add John Collins as a factor into that, and... I mean, if John Collins is the third best offensive player on your team, I definitely think that's a playoff team in the Eastern Conference, even if the defense is bad. And then for the defense with Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal was a solid enough defender when the Wizards were a playoff contender, and he wasn't having to absolutely carry his team and get 30 plus points per game consistently. Now, I believe put him on a playoff team like this, especially with him knowing the issues that Trey Young has, and he'll be more than capable 
of being an above average to at least average defensive player. And then I think you either keep DeAndre Hunter or you trade or sign for some sort of defensive wing and you pair that with Capella, John Collins taking another step to be an above average defender. And I think Trey Young's defensive deficiencies can be made up for, to the point where this is like the 18th best defense in the NBA. Uh, also sign some defenders to bring off of the bench like a Mo Harkless or something like that i'm directly referencing what i did in my my league series but i definitely think those were good moves to make and you just put some defensive guys around the core of these three players you have clint capella as the fourth guy in the offense catching alley-oops and running pick and rolls Dwayne deadman is a really good backup center i think you could keep herder in a trade for bradley beal so you have that guy for some offense off of your bench I would look to sign Jeremy Grant and play him at small forward, again referencing something that I did directly in that My League series, but uh, he would be a great defensive Swiss Army knife to include into this team. He's obviously more ideal as a four than a three, but it's not like he can't play small forward. He's a good three-point shooter, and he plays good defense on pretty much every position except for center, so he can definitely play small forward. So I think if this team went into the season with a lineup of Trey Young, Bradley Beal, Jeremy Grant, John Collins, and Clint Capella with Herter and Deadman off of the bench, maybe sign some other guys, I'm not really sure who, maybe you bring back Jeff Teague if you think he's the backup point guard you want, and then I think you have a very good, like, six seed in the east maybe even five seed depending on if trey young takes a next step if john collins takes a next step so i definitely think trading for an established talent rather than drafting an anthony edwards or a lamello ball i think going for a more established piece is really the direction this team should go in because trey young is the level of talent where you can really win now with him and build something good for the future but that's what I think the Hawks should do in this offseason. That is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.